Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Car Night Stream. My name is Chewy, and hopefully we're going to be able to bring you Virtus Pro versus LGB. We do apologise for the extremely late notice with this. Kai and I told me about two seconds ago this, that this match was going live, and so I literally set up the stream as quickly as possible. Hopefully the volume levels are okay, and you can hear everything all good, and I'm just going to sort this out because I just realised that it's not fitted to screen, so I do apologise about that. But there we go, we should be good, and we're ready to go. You've not missed anything whatsoever. So, it's Verdus Pro versus LGB. Thank you so much for tuning in. This evening, unfortunately, once again, Car Knight cannot be with us, but it's going to be on Dust 2 off the start. And you can see that Neo and Taz have already gone down. Crim's the only casualty for the T-Squad, of course. Dust 2 being one of those maps which is very slightly more T-sided. So I'm just going to shove on Auto Director, just because I personally feel more comfortable using about it. So, stream, stream, hopefully the stream should be good to go now. I do apologize about that. I realized that my OBS... Hadn't fitted it, but it's actually going to be now. Suddenly, even though Virtus Pro had the man advantage earlier on, they're in a tricky situation now, or Pasha is on his own. It's going to be Twist and Dennis going up against him. He's actually going to be able to get one. Is he going to find the second? The bomb has been planted as well. Dennis is going to try and find him through the smoke. He's going to put shots down. Eventually gets the headshot, but Pasha was going for that defuse, so that was very, very close. Once again, guys, let me know how the volumes are and everything. Let me know if you can hear me well enough, which you should be able to. And everything else should be good to go. So, into round number two here. I do apologize if you have any slight lag there. I'm just making sure that everything is good for the stream. And actually, Pasha already choosing to pull out an SSG-08, which is very interesting considering the fact that they did lose that first pistol round. You see AK-47s and Gilils, as you would expect, in the squad of the T-side. But the CT squad of Virtus Pro from Poland are pushing up aggressively here. And by Ali starts off strong, taken out Sype. Crimson's going to have to rotate back from Long Doors. He's going to reply, though. The revenge kill on to by Ali. Neo down to 17 HP. Snacks down to 46. We are going to be bringing you, well, one more game at least, if not some more games later on this evening, ladies and gentlemen. But again, this is last minute. And Twist with a great headshot through the door there onto Pasha taking him out. Slow round so far, though it looks like the T's are starting to make their way onto short aggressively. They've only had one casualty so far. They're going to meet a player here up on the site. He is going to spot them. Dennis with a headshot onto Snacks that was. Taz goes down as well. It's all up to Neo on 17 HP. He's all the way over towards B. And he's just going to save that SSG 08, which leaves Olaf Meister... A clear path to be able to get that bomb down. And that should be 2-0. Thank you, Kamsudos, once again. The guy with the IPs. Very nice to have you here in the chat, indeed. So hopefully we'll get a good viewership. I believe Kynet has put it on a, um, has put it on HLTV. So we're all good to go. And no matter how many viewers we get, I want to cast this match. So we're going to keep going with it regardless. We want to keep out pumping content to you guys. And we hope you're enjoying. And as long as there's one or two people enjoying in the chat, I do not mind on the viewership count. So thank you once again for joining us. That's going to be 2-0 though to LGB. Strong start coming in from the Swedish squad. Neo has successfully been able to save that SSG. And as you would expect, he hands it over to Pasha, although Taz has actually got it, so they're just swapping it between each other at the second by the looks of things. This snack's going to end up with it at the end. We're about to see. Let's see what they're going to do this time. It looks like it's going to be split. Dennis actually heading over towards B at the second. And there's going to be, uh, I think that's actually Olaf Meister uh, back towards spawn, T spawn at the second. I do believe at the second, so... See how slow the T-Squad player... I mean, me and Kai Knight were talking the other day about how slow Inferno can get sometimes. But we were also discussing about how slow this map can be as well. Crimson's going to find a player there. Takes down Pasha off the start. Didn't get the headshot. And he has been taken down to 42 HP. But he's still alive. And they've got the man advantage and the weapon advantage once again. Let me just, uh, sorry, let me just edit something incredibly quickly for you guys. So you shouldn't have any more issues. I do apologise if there's a tiny bit of lag every now and again. I literally just set up the stream in about 30 seconds time. But the T-Squad have been able to make their way on to be completely uncontested. The bomb is going to get planted there by Sype, as you do see on your screen. And that's going to be tricky for the CT-Squad to try and push in here. 
Especially now as Neo has gone down once again by Ali on 57 HP. Snack still with that SSG08 in hand, but they haven't been able to do a single thing with it so far from what I've seen. This is looking really good here for LGB. This should be 3-0. Snacks is going to reply though, taking down all of Meister. By Ali's going to push in there as well. Is he going to be able to get another one? Yes, he does. And now all of a sudden, this has switched. So now Dennis has got to challenge. By Ali's going to take him out as well. The bomb is going to blow up, which means that they didn't win the round. But still, Verdus Pro were able to take them all out. Pick up a few weapons and continue it. So, 3-0 it is now. And because they managed to take down all of LGB there, they are going to be able to buy up here. They're still, you know, their money situation isn't the best. And because Pasha bought earlier on, well, no, he's going to be able to buy now. Um, and they should be okay. They've all got head armor. Uh, you know, they've got as many grenades as possible. But still, Olof Meister with that AWP in hand and four AK-47s as well for the LGB squad. So you do not want to take them lightly whatsoever. You've got two Virtus Pro players on long, although one of them is going to be rotating back to site. You've got one watching short and two on B, so a pretty standard setup. And by the looks of things, with Crims in this position right now, they're just happy to take it slow on the T side again, playing nothing too risky. They know now after winning the first three rounds that Virtus Pro can buy here, and Olaf Master is going to get flashed off the start towards long doors, but still no casualties yet. Kyanite has bet on how raises, apparently. Interesting choice. I'm not putting any bets down. I may do one later on. Olaf Meister is going to find a player there. Gets knocked down a 43 HP. Is this going to be the start of the first round on the board for Virtus Pro? We talk about it time and time again how important it is for the team who have lost the first three rounds of the game after that initial pistol round, obviously, to be able to get one round on the board in the fourth round. Is it going to be a long push here? It looks like it could be a split. Oh, great shot there from Olaf Meister. Starting things up. That's going to put the CT squad in a bit of a difficult situation. They still don't quite know where the bomb is, but it's going to be heading towards A short now. And they are going to be aware of that. Crims is going to answer with two, taking out Neo and Pasha. Snacks is going to have to come from CT spawn and see how many he can get. He manages to pick up Crims there, but he's all on his own. Is he going to be able to pull off a one versus four? I'm afraid I don't think so. And LGB are looking good here. Yes, they are on the more favourable side, but they've been able to shut down Virtus Pro pretty well here, even when Virtus Pro were able to buy. And this should force Virtus Pro into a tricky situation. Olaf Master with at least his second kill of the round. That's going to be 4 0 to LGB. A Nip streaming this? Or a Nip streaming another game? I think Nip are probably streaming another game. Okay, into round number five, and as expected, Virtus Pro are on another eco. We've got a couple of P250s, a 5.7 and two CZ75s there, and once again, four AK-47s and an AWP for the Swedes. Thank you, Kamsudos. We do appreciate the support. We love Anders casting. We think he's a wicked caster, of course, and he contributes so much to this community, but uh, we're glad that you enjoy our casting as well. Crimson's is going to smoke off mid-doors there. To see if he can pick up anybody. This should be a pretty convincing round to LGB. Although we did see Virtus Pro on an eco earlier on. And they took them all out. They didn't have enough time to defuse the bomb as well. So it was a bit late for them. But, uh, you know, Virtus Pro are one of those teams that no matter what gun is in their hands, I'd still be scared to come up across them. You know, I was talking to Kai Knight yesterday at the Gfinity Studios. And I was saying, even if I had an AK-47 in hand. or Well, a FAMAS is actually my favourite gun to use. But even if I had my personal favourite gun of a FAMAS in my hands. And say Pasha had like a Zeus or something crazy small in his hands. I'd still be scared to go up against him. You know, one of those squads that you do not want to take lightly. And that's exactly what LGB are doing. Once again, a slow T round so far. We've got 40 seconds left on the clock. It looks like they're going to be making their way towards B through lower tunnels. We could use better mics. I've got a £70 blue snowball microphone. Which is a very good quality snow uh, microphone. So... Hopefully we can try and fix that audio quality for you if it's not the best, but it should be fine. Anyway, here we go. The push starts to come in towards B. This is why I said that you need to be careful. Taz and Neo do manage to get the first two, but in quick fashion, they all do go down. Dennis left on 7 HP, 38 for Twist, and Sype was on about 60, I think, was the right number. I'm not too sure, though. Um, but yeah. 
I need to donate to you. My microphone is absolutely, it should be fine. I'm not quite sure what's the problem with it. I need to have a look and have a look. But it's a Blue Snowball microphone. And whenever I record videos and the like, it sounds absolutely fine. It should do anyway. As long as that's the one that I'm using now. So. Round six it is. Furtis Pro still to try and get around on the board. They have been able to buy here and they have taken out Twist. So that is a good start already to try and take one player down from LGB and get their first round on the board because uh, we talked about it earlier about how obviously the T side is slightly more strong in a lot of people's opinions on Dust2 but at the same time you do need to try and get some rounds on the board especially when you are Verdus Pro and you're a top team you should be getting as many on the board as possible so yeah I do have a very good microphone it's probably just settings that I'm getting wrong somewhere probably those issues so enough about that as long as you guys can understand what I'm saying that's the most important thing of course Dennis putting his way through towards CT spawn. Taz is going to catch them out though. That's Crimson and Dennis going down. Great defensive work coming in by this man on your screen. Not going to pick up the hat trick though. The site replies. Oh, actually Olaf Meister did pick up his own teammate there. Team kill with the AWP, but still first round on the board for Verdus Pro. Exactly what the doctor ordered. <laughs> Chewy focus on the game. I will do. I am. I'm focusing, my friend. Into round number seven. Hope you guys are enjoying. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm not going to read the chat anymore because otherwise it will completely distract me from the game. I'm sure Kai and I will catch me up on anything if there's anything important which I miss. Let's see what's going to happen here. It looks like it could be another slow round from the T squad once again. Two push towards A long doors. Pash is going to be there. He's going to be able to pick off Olaf Meister. So that did pay off. By Ali is going to throw that smoke grenade down there to push any other. Uh, to uh, slow down, sorry, any other pushes from there. Neo's going to be over towards A short, the second, or catwalk. Crimson's is going to take him down, though, as Neo misses some shots, evening up the situation to a four on four. It's two orps on the CT squad. And come on, auto director, please put me on board with somebody. And there we go, Dennis does manage to take out Taz. Snacks responds, though, with his orp. Both kills so far going in favor of the CTs have been AWP kills. Pasha gets taken down to 17 HP. Now let's see where they're going to go. They know that two players are over towards A. They know that there's only going to be one over towards B. And that will be Snacks. Is he going to stop them? Let's see. Oh no, he gets taken out. Crims with the AK-47 kill. They need to be very careful not to peek here because Pasha's still dangerous with that AWP. No matter, no matter what kind of uh, HP level he's on. But they have got a clear entry in that B-bomb site. And as soon as I do say that, the bomb does get planted. Five one it is. Looks like Pasha is going to save that up. So just going to wait for that bomb to blow up. And then it should be 6-1 to Verdus Pro. Well it will be 6-1 to Verdus Pro. Indeed. I hope you guys are having a nice Wednesday afternoon though. I think I've casted Counter Strike. Or I I, I think I don't think there's been a day where I haven't casted any form of game for like the past week or so. This is good. I'm not sure if the stream just went offline. But it should be back now. And there we go. They do manage to save their weapons by Ali and by uh, sorry, Pasha. Um, managing to save their AWP and M4. And Snacks, Neo and Taz are going to be able to buy up here. Not the best money situation. Neo has been able to pretty much have a full buy. But uh, he's not got much money left in the bank after that. And still, you do see four AK-47s and an AWP in the hands of the T-Squad. Olaf Master... Meister, sorry. With your trying to get somebody through mid-double doors there. Through the smoke. But isn't going to be able to find anybody at the second by the looks of things. And having a look at the CT setup, they're expecting them to go towards B. And by the looks of where the bomb could be heading, that could be correct. They've already pushed quite aggressively in there. And they've got control of B tunnels by the looks of things. There is going to be two players heading towards there at the second. So let's just jump on board with them at the second. Twist is going to try and find somebody at the second. All the action is going down over here towards B tunnels. Twist is just firing in every single direction that he possibly can. He's going to back out of there and rightly so. Throwing some grenades down for cover to make sure that no nasty CT players will be pushing through. The only players to take any damage so far really has been Taz on 73 and Crims on 27. So Crims does need to be careful indeed. And what looked like a B push. LGB have changed very, very quickly indeed. They're heading towards A. 
They're going to be pushing long, all five of them. And you can see the CT player starting to wrap around the edge. There's going to be one heading towards T-Spawn at the second. Let's turn on Auto Director once again and see who it's going to put us on board with. Snacks is going to be the man on his screen. Pasha gets the first kill. Olaf Meister replies. And as soon as we do say that, it doesn't look like the push is going to be successful. And then suddenly Olaf Meister proves me wrong. But he's still in a one-on-two situation. Nine seconds left on the clock. Olaf Master's got to do something quickly. He's not going to be able to do it. And that's going to be 6-2. Second round on the board there for Virtus Pro. They held strong. That looked like that could be a good round there for LGB. They were pretty much at one well. They weren't committed to B, but Virtus Pro shut them out of B. They managed to get control of tunnels. Make sure that they weren't going to be able to push through there. And so the only option for LGB was to rotate back towards A. They chose to go A long. They got shut down quickly. Pasha with the first kill of the round, I believe. With his AWP. And that means now, for the first time, LGB have been forced back onto pistols since the first round. And Neo is going to be able to take out Dennis there to start things off. Crim's taking down the 30 HP from that great grenade coming in. Neo with the second one. Is he going to be able to get a hat trick? Taz gets another. Twist with the only kill for the T-Squad so far. It looks like this should very quickly go in favour of Verdus Pro. And as soon as I do say that, 3-6 is your score. Raise your Chewy. Why are we raising your Chewy? Raise your Chewy if you want to raise your Chewy. But feel free to raise your Chewy. I don't know if I've done anything wrong that's making you blame or raise your Chewy. But here we go into round number 10. One third of the way through the game. Two orps in the hands of the CT squad. All AK-47s for LGB. So it's going to be Snacks and Pasha, as you would expect, with the big green guns. And let's see what the T-Squad are going to do so far. Virtus Pro really like to play uh, and go right forward on those A-long doors. Cypher's going to meet somebody there. He's going to try and put some shots down, unsuccessfully hitting anybody, though. Neo with a grenade towards Catwalk to try and prevent any pushes coming in there in quick succession. Snacks could find some players here. They're stacking up towards mid-doors. So if he's not careful, he's going to get flashed here. He does manage to get one, though. Taz replying with the second one. Twist is going to get taken down. That's Snack's second of the round. I'm not quite sure why Auto Director just took us off the guy who got two kills with his AWP. But that shut down LGB's push. Bialy's going to get another one coming on the flank. Is he going to be able to pick up the last kill? Crim's on 37. Make that 11 HP. So one versus four for him. And that strong CT work there from the Polish squad. It didn't really matter where the LGB squad looked like they were going to be able to go. They were going to get shut down quickly and Snacks with his AWP did great work. And I feel like I'm going to sneeze any second, so I'm trying not to. Crims does pick up Snacks, but by Ali responds with the headshot and 4-6 it is. So, it was 5-0 I do believe at one point and LGB were looking good. But Virtus Pro showing why they are the kind of itchy champions. A nip losing. A nip losing to Hellraisers. If somebody can post the score for me, that would be uh, amazing, just so I could see. Once again, though, LGB on another eco round. Four ZZ75s, make that three now as Twist does go down. Snipe's going to go down as well. Dennis is going to try and pick off somebody here. He does manage to pick up Snacks, but Pasha just comes in and annihilates him with a grenade. Now it's going to be left up to Crims and Olaf Meister. They have been able to take down Pasha and Snacks, though, so it's not quite all over yet. Especially if uh, Crims could pick up that kill, but he's not going to be able to. Olaf Meister is the last one alive. It's going to be 5-6, and Virtus Pro have woken up. They are war man ready to go here on Dust 2. Oh really? Is it kind of like a repeat of the uh, the Titan Nip game the other day? El Clasico as it seems to have been dubbed now. 11-3 Hellraisers. Wow. Wow. I never would have expected that. Nip three sides on CT Inferno against Hellraisers. Wow. What's going on in the Nip camp? I'm not sure, but I'm not worried at the minute because I'm happy to be bringing you this game between the Katowice champions of Virtus Pro and the Swedish team of LGB. Another slow round by the looks of things coming in from LGB, just deciding where they're going to go. They are starting to stack up towards A-long doors, so it looks like they could start to push through here. They are going to meet Pasha with his AWP, though, if they do. They are going to smoke off, so Pasha's going to push right the way back. He's happy to just sit on site by the looks of things. 
Or is he going to try and help out on a short or towards catwalk? It looks like he could be. He's not quite decided where they're going to push. And now they do. It's going to be a split. Three on long. Four on long now as the bomb starts to rotate back towards there. There's going to be one player on catwalk. Which is the man on the screen. That's going to be twist. Big first kill there onto by Ali. I can choose between Titan versus Wizards or Alternate and Titan. I'll have a look. I'll have a look at that after this game. I'll have a look a bit later on. Sipe on 12 HP. There we. Oh, that was a great kill by Crims, managing to take down the Orpa of Pasha. It's going to virtually leave the A bomb site open. Well, oh, there is going to be players rotating. One of them is going to be Taz. He does take down Sipe. Now it's a 2 on 2, an AWP and an M4 against an AWP and an AK-47. The bomb has been planted, as you can hear, hopefully, if your volume levels are okay. Crims is going to try and find a player there, jumping up. Dennis gets one. It's all left up to Snacks. He's got two players to kill, and he's got an AWP in hand, and he's got to try and defuse. He's still got plenty of HP, but uh, if I was him, I wouldn't challenge him anything silly. Oh, he does manage to take out Crims there, but he's going to save his AWP. He's going to back away. Both players deciding to save their AWP. The bomb is going to blow up, and that's going to be 7-5 after 12 rounds. And this has been pretty kind of standard so far, you know. Virtus Pro are going to be happy if they get a 6. If it ends 9-6 after the first half, I would have thought they would be uh, relatively happy with that, considering they were 5 0 down as well. I mean, you know, Virtus Pro are one of those teams that just want to try and get as many rounds on the board on the first side, no matter whether it's T or CT, they just are. But um, still, 9-6 isn't the worst situation to be in whatsoever. Taz pushing towards lower tunnels at the second, though. Oh, that was a great first three kills there from Crims, Olaf, Meister, and Twist. One each for them. Crims has been taking down a 17 and Twist down a 60, but still, that's three big players there for Virtus Pro already gone down. And unless, unless sorry, Snacks and Bialy can pull something off quickly. Which Snacks is going to try and do. He does pick up two. Almost evens up the situation. And now LGB are in a tricky spot. Olaf Meister has opened things up for them though. They look like they were going to be committing towards B. Snacks with his AWP shut them down in quick fashion. It's a three on one. So they still need to be careful. Because Snacks is deadly with this gun. He's going to find another player there. That's the hat trick for Snacks. He's got two players left. Is he going to get taken down? Or is he going to pull off? An ace, including a one versus three clutch. I think I would jump out of my chair. I would cry. I would wail with tears of joy and elation. But we will see. He's back up towards his position there. He's going to find another player. Is Sype going to be able to take him out? He's been taken down to 40 HP. Sype does shut him down. That was a bit close for comfort there, LGB. They were able to take it. But considering they got the first three kills. And looked like they could have clear entry onto that B bomb site. Sype just went, nope. Don't even try it, my friends. 8-5 it is. Round number 14. So two rounds to go left in the first half before, obviously, things do switch up. And Virtus Pro are back down to pistols, unfortunately for them. Score apparently is 12-4, as you can see in the chat. To Hellraiser's up against Nip on Inferno. Let me know. Uh, well, can I just message me on Steam or DM me on Twitch is probably easiest. And tell me what games Anders isn't doing. And I'll probably just do those. Because I would have thought Anders would be doing most of them. And I'll probably just do the games which he isn't doing. Which is this one and maybe one or two others. I should be doing the alternate game later on this evening. So it looks like the bomb's going to be firmly committed towards B. I would have thought LGB could be quite aware that they are on an eco. And that's going to lead them that clear entry onto B as Neo does go down. You can see them starting to rush in there. The CT squad are going to try and move in as quick as possible. Snacks picks up one. But does get taken down straight away by Crims. Taz is going to pick up one with that CZ75. He's going to be able to pick up any more. It's all left up to Taz. He's going to get spotted. They know exactly where he is. That should be 9-5. It is indeed. And if Virtus Pro can get another round on the board here, then 9-6 is going to be just a pretty average standard score here on Dust2. Nothing really too much splitting the two teams apart. I wouldn't have thought. Pasha has been able to get that AWP. They've got M4s otherwise. And they have all been able to get head armor, so not the worst situation whatsoever for them. Of course, LGB still with a good amount of money in the back. And people are wanting me to do the Titan game, so there's a good chance that I will do it. Or, wait, is it 
is the Titan game on at the same time as the alternate game? Well, we'll just have to have a vote. We'll have to see. And I'm debating who to put my skins on. I'm debating putting some skins on Clan Mystic later on. Uh, but we'll have to see. We'll talk about that a bit later on. We'll talk about that in half time and see what you guys think is what I should do with my skins. Here we go though. Last round of the first half. Redis Pro versus LGB. 590 is your score as you can obviously see at the top. Both teams with one orc. Uh, Dennis is going to get the first one there. Interesting that Olaf Meister hasn't got that orc. But Dennis hasn't stayed. He can still do work with it though by the looks of things. Olaf Master is the man. Meister. I'm not sure why I keep saying Master. I do apologise. Is on your screen. It's a four versus five. Bomb's going to be making its way towards short. Dennis with the second one. He's playing very well so far. Is Bialy going to be able to shut him down? He's got to pick up that M4. Looks like shots could be going in and he does get taken down. So LGB looking very, very good here. That was a great shot by Twist onto Taz. It's all going to be left to Snacks. He might as well challenge this. Crims is going to spot him. Only one casualty there for the T-Squad. Bialy was left. Uh, so I know that was Dennis, I think, uh, who got left on one HP. But it doesn't matter. LGB look very strong now on the T side. 10-5 is your score. Heading into the halfway mark. Things are just going to get switched up. So how is everybody doing on this lovely Wednesday afternoon? Are we all doing good? Are we all enjoying ourselves? Are we all having some great Counter-Strike action? I was just chilling on another game trying to sort out some, uh, um, some uh, add-ons and things like that for another game and buying some things and then suddenly kind of was just like, Chewy, we need to go, we need to cast now. Hurry up and get your ass streaming. So that's what I did for you guys. And uh, yeah, I'm debating putting some skids on um, Clan Mystic later on, but we will see. I never feel like skins are safe. So here we go, lots of flashes going down to mid. Obviously the teams have switched sides now to keep everything fair. We're 15 rounds in, we've got 15 rounds potentially left to go. Cypher's is going to pick up Pasha though, but Ali does respond by taking out Twist. Is Cypher going to get his second one? Yes he does, and the hat trick. This is the thing that decides games, plays like that. If you can take both pistol rounds, Against the Katowice champions, you're rocking and you're rolling. And Sype, even though he's on 31 HP, has been able to take down three players. Neo is going to respond onto Crims, though. It's a three versus two. The bomb is heading over towards A. They have got clear entry onto it, so they should be able to plant it, which will be good whether they lose the round or not. Well, they've still got a lot of work to do. Neo is going to spot some players there with his P250. Is he going to be able to get anything onto them? He's got to back away from that. And good decision from him to be able to do so. A grenade's going to come in. Doesn't look like it's going to take down anybody yet. Sype's going to try and push through. He does manage to pick up the quad. Dennis gets the last kill of the round. And again, those sorts of plays are the differences between winning a game and losing a game. And LGB have guaranteed themselves both pistol rounds against the Polish squad of Virtus Pro, and that should mean now, obviously, that Virtus Pro will be, well, will have to eco, and therefore forcing another round in favour of LGB, and if this is 12-5, LGB will only be four rounds away on the CT side from taking the game against Virtus Pro. Virtus Pro, in some ways, has seemed to have been, well, not hot and cold, but, um, you know, there's been a lot of discussion recently about whether they've been playing their best, um, they lost to Wizards the other day. I casted that game on Inferno, 16-10, which is a big shock. Uh, later on that evening, they did lose to Titan on Season, 16-11 or 16-12, I do believe. Um, but then they beat Titan yesterday, I think, like 16-5. So, maybe a bit hot and cold for them. Bialy has actually bought an AWP. Uh, sorry, not an AWP, a Galil. Why did I say an AWP? Three Famases and two M4s for LGB, though, at the start of this round. 12, 7 to Hellraisers, so it looks like uh, maybe Hellraisers are letting up that lead, but Taz does get the first kill down to Crim, so it does reply. Looks like this should be going in favour of LG, sorry, yeah, of LGB if anything can happen, although it is a 3 on 3 situation at the second. You never quite know with Virtus Pro, I said, you know, earlier on, it doesn't really matter what they have in their hands, they can be deadly. And they started off with pistols, apart from Bali who had that Galil. And now they've been able to get Famases. So, let's see if LGB can take this one over. Hold their resilience and push in. Or whether Virtus Pro are going to get a big round on the board. It's a two on two. They start to push into the side. Bialy's going to be able to pick up two. It's all left up. To Olaf Meister. And the Eco for 
Virtus Pro somehow managed to pay off by Ali with three big kills there with his Galil. And it was a very good decision there for him to be able to buy that. They say high risk, high reward. And he just proved it. Who dares wins, eh? And that's going to force LGB onto an eco. So now this could switch things up. That should have been 12-5 according to the script. But this is Virtus Pro. They don't like to go by the script half the time. From what I found out. And it's paid off for them here. Pasha's going to pick up one. Neo picks up another one onto Twist as well. It's a 5 versus 3. Saipi's going to respond. But Neo's going to get another one. And another one as well. And it's all left up to Crims. Very quick round so far. They're just happy to push through. They knew that they were going to force LGB down to the eco. And that's going to be 11-2. Seven. Who's your money on then, guys? Who are, you, who are your skins on before the game? And who are your skins on now, if you could put them on anybody and change it at this second? Once again, how do you beat... On another eco, four Caesar seven fives and a deagle. So they can do some damage here. And they are starting to push aggressively, even though they're nowhere near anybody by the looks of things. Because pretty much, well, it's a 3-2 split. So it's three on long, two on catwalk. Although now it's only going to be one on catwalk. As Neo does get shut down. Pasha does respond though. Pasha is going to be able to find another one. And he picks up the M4. This is great work by Pasha. This is what I said about you just need to be so careful about this guy. No matter what he's got in his hand, he just seems to... Have some crazy powers with that CZ75 as well. It's going to be left up to Crims. Neo, the only casualty for the T squad. And it should be 11 8. Lots more closer than maybe we expected this to be. And, uh, you know, I talked about the resilience of LGB and how they managed to take down that pistol round, which should have left them in a good situation to be able to take two rounds after that and put themselves on 13 5. And now suddenly. Because of the resilience of Virtus Pro taking the eco round after they lost the pistol round. We see the scores at 11 to 8. So an auto sniper in the hands of Dennis, an AWP in the hands of Olaf Meister, and three M4s against an M4, three AKs, and a FAMAS. Another slow round potentially here. We've got three on catwalk, well, two on catwalk, one towards uh, double doors. One near towards T spawn, and one in lower tunnels as well. We've got two on long, one on catwalk for the CTs, and then two towards B, by the looks of things, anyway, from what I can see. No casualties as of yet, though, although smokes grenades are going to start to go in. Sipes in a great position here in CT spawn to see if he can pick up anybody. Crimson is expecting it as well, but it looks like that was a fake. They're going to be expecting it, and then all of a sudden, Virtus Pro are pushing towards short. Olaf Meister is going to respond though, go, it doesn't matter where you try and trick my team, I'm going to take you out. Snacks does actually find that player in the end, but uh, you didn't see him for a while, I do believe he was flashed. And LGB are looking good here on the CT side, although as soon as I do say that, it's all evened up as Pasha gets a grenade kill onto Sype. It's a 3 versus 3, HP advantage in favour of the CT squad, now the man advantage in favour of them as well. Pasha is going to try and find that player on towards Catwalk, does just about be able to take him out, although he has been knocked down to 37 HP. It's still a two versus two. Bailey's going to find one. Is Bailey going to find the second one as well? Yes, he is. Bailey with two headshots in a row to guarantee that round there for LGB. 9-11 is going to be your score. And uh, that was a bit close for comfort there. Virtus Pro tried to trick them out, making it look like they were going to be heading towards mid-doors and through mid-doors and maybe up to B. But instead, they suddenly rushed Catwalk. Got onto that A-bomb site. They managed to get the bomb down, which obviously helped their situation. And once again, LGB are on another eco. Deagle, two deagles, sorry. Three CZ75s. And if this goes to script, Virtus Pro should get on double figures. As Crims decides to take out his own player. And then gets taken out as a punishment himself from Bialy. He should be 10 to 11. And I'm pretty sure it will be unless Sype and Twist can just pull off. Anything absolutely crazy. So I'm just going to find a player at the top there. Misses his shots and he does get punished again as Pasha takes him out. And now it's all up to Twist. 
It looks like he's going to save this gun. The bomb has been planted over towards B. He's got that M4 in hand. He doesn't want to challenge anything silly. The Rodas Pro guys, as you kind of expect them to do, knowing the nature of their playstyle, are going to try and challenge him there. They know he's the last one left alive. They know he's going to be saving that gun. So they're going to go and try and find him. It'll be interesting to see if they do. By the looks of things, there's a good chance that they will. He is in pit, and they are all starting to congregate over there. So this is Twist against the world. He's going to be able to pick up by Ali. He's going to pick up Neo as well. And maybe Virtus Pro have got a bit too cocky. Is he going to be able to get any more? No, he's not. Snacks does eventually shut him down, but he still managed to get two big kills there. And obviously, although Virtus Pro will be able to buy again, it does mean that they are going to have to force two more players to buy and maybe they didn't really need to t worry about that too much. So, 11-10 it is. And I feel a cold coming on because uh, my nose is getting clogged up. Which isn't very nice whatsoever, but there you go. 10-11 it is. Full buys for both teams. And I've just seen you DM me kind of like, but I do apologise for not replying. Pasha with the first two. They're on to Olaf, Meister and Sype. Neo pushing towards Catwalk. Is he going to find that player on 2 HP? That is going to be Twist. Twist backs off towards CT. This looks like this could be a very open A bomb site for Virtus Pro. Twist does go down to Bayali with that grenade. Dennis pushing up through Catwalk. He is going to be able to reply, spawn, uh, getting a shot onto Neo there. But Virtus Pro pretty much just pushed through Catwalk with ease. Uh, pretty much just pushed through A long, sorry, with ease. Two, three versus one now. <laughs> Crims is on one HP. He's not going to pull this off, I'm afraid. There we go. Bayali does finish him off. 11-11, and we are all equal. Now, this is very interesting because we went into the half 10-5. Then LGB managed to win the pistol round of the second half on their CT side, so that put them up to 11-5. to And now, since then, since the 16th round, Verdus Pro have taken six on the trot. Evening things up to 11-11. They also have the money advantage here. And they're on the T side. Which, as we had discussed earlier, some people may argue is more favourable. Looks like it's going to be a catwalk push there. And it's going to come in quickly here for Virtus Pro. They are not mucking about. And rightly so, as Bialy does get the first kill. Let's see if Twist can respond and do some defensive work. They're in a tricky situation. If LGB want to try and win this round, they've got to go for a take. They're going to back away from that and not push anything silly. And Virtus Pro pretty much just walked up there. Taz gets the second one. A revenge kill from Crims. But it's still looking so good here for Virtus Pro. They know that they're hitting their shots. And it's all going to be up to Sype here in a 1 versus 4. Flash grenades do go down. Neo takes him down in the end. 12-11. And for the first time in the game, Virtus Pro take the lead. Is this going to be a good night for LGB? Are Virtus Pro going to show us why they are champions? There's a good possibility of it with the way they're playing, and another good possibility considering once again they forced LGB down onto an eco. And let's see how the CT squad are going to play this, considering the fact that they only have pistols. It'd be interesting to see if they do anything interesting whatsoever. I have a feeling that they won't, considering it's four AK-47s and an AWP. For Virtus Pro. And what's the score in the nip game? I did just see somebody post it. 11-13 nip hell raiser. Sorry, 10-13. Oh, wow. It is getting close then. In that game over there. It's all up to Olaf Meister now, though. Taz the only casualty for Virtus Pro. Snacks down to 34 HP. It's not going to really matter too much. They're going to get the bomb down as well. Olaf Meister is towards Tunnel, and I think they know that he's there as well. Bailey eventually deciding to plant the bomb. He's just going to back away from that though. And is he going to bother to save a pistol? Or what's he going to do? It looks like he's backing away completely. And he's going to save a pistol. He's got absolutely nothing else whatsoever. And he's just going to run away. Oh, he's going to look for exit frags anyway. And he's able to pick up one on, there onto Bayali. But they know exactly where he is now. This is going to be 13-11 to Virtus Pro. And what's happened to LGB? Since Virtus Pro picked up that eco round in the 16th round... Oh, sorry, in the 17th round, I do apologise. Things have changed up. The momentum is completely switched. And uh, Virtus Pro have not lost a round since then. Three rounds away from taking the game here on the Dust 2.
Bird is pro are looking good. They're showing us why they are champions. Earl of Meister has bought himself the AWP though. I'd love to see if they could pull up something here and do something good. And now they're faking. They're throwing those flashes towards A-Long. It's not going to work by the looks of things though. Because LGB, they're getting aggressive. And that's what they needed to do. They knew that there was going to be a fake there. Birders Pro tried to get the flashes towards A-Long doors. To try and trick LGB into thinking they were going towards that direction. And then suddenly LGB pushed through B. Just at the same time as Verdus Pro were. Pasha is going to find a player there. Misses his shot with the CZ75. Gets taken down to 79 HP. He's going to get challenged again by the looks of things. He is flashed. They need to be careful though because they know he has got an orb. He's going to miss his second shot. And he's going to get punished by being, uh, being taken down to 37 HP. This should be 13-12. This is what we wanted to see from LGB. There we go. Only one casualty for them, which was Olaf Meister with that AWP. But still, Virtus Pro tried to trick them out. They'd won so many rounds in a row. But LGB just said, no, we've had enough of this now. We're not letting you do this to us anymore. And that's going to be 13-12. So still only a one round difference between these two squads. Virtus Pro still holding the lead here. And because of the massive amount of rounds, I think it was seven rounds in a row that they won. That is going to mean that they're happily able to buy up again another AWP and four AK-47s. 14-11 to Hellraisers over Nip. There's going to be some very happy people who put their skins onto Hellraisers, isn't there? And it looks like the push is coming in towards A-Long. It's worked so far for Virtus Pro and they're going to try it again to see what happens. All those grenades going up there. Have a look at all those yellow lines. Trying to take them out. Twist is going to pick up one though. The defense looks like it could be a bit stronger here from LGB. As soon as I do say that, it's now a three on three. Snacks is going to try and find that player in CT spawn by the looks of things. This is going to be able to pick him up. Oh, that's a great shot by Snacks there. Completely distracting them. And this is what's so great about Virtus Pro. Is that it all looked like the action was going to be heading on towards A-Long. That is where the attention was for LGB. And then suddenly Snacks just comes up. From B, takes down two of them, and leaves Sipe, the last one left alive, on 9 HP. Completely distracting LGB and just going, okay, you took a strong TD round in the last round, we're going to take a strong T round again and put ourselves on 14 12 and one round away from match point. And Sipe, good decision here, he's on 5 HP, he doesn't want to challenge anything silly, he's got that M4 in hand, which he needs to keep, and he's going to back away from that, head towards T spawn. They are going hunting once again though, Virtus Pro. Not going to find him though. Not enough time left on the clock. And that's going to be now 14 to 12. Let's have a look at the money. See what's going on for LGB. Let's have a look at the scoreboard actually because we haven't really had a look at it so far. Not too much differentials between the two squads from what I can see. LGB pretty much performing consistently in terms of frags. There's only about four kills of difference. Top fragger is Crims on 19. Bottom is going to be Olaf Meister on 15. 26 kills and 14 deaths both for Bayali. Probably the most standout player in terms of the frags in that respect. But uh, I've got to give it up to all of Virtus Pro. They've looked strong here. They were 10-5 down at the end of the first half. They didn't care. They took seven rounds on the trot after that phenomenal eco in the 17th round. And now they're putting all the pressure onto LGB. So, having a look at where the T's are at the second. Are they going to be pushing through towards Catwalk? They're going to have trouble, though. Olaf Meister does pick up some. Bayali picks up two, though, to answer back. Is he going to be able to get the hatchet? Yes, he does. He does eventually get taken down. It's left onto a one-on-one. -on -one. Bayali's been the standout player for me so far. He's looked great. Flash grenade is coming in, though. Neo on 73 HP. Crims on 41. It's coming down to a one-on-one -on -one now. This is a big, big gunfight. This is a huge moment in the game. We've got 46 seconds left on the clock. If Neo wins this and wins the round, that's going to put Virtus Pro on match point. If LGB win this gunfight, if Crims wins it and takes the round, that's going to be 14-13. That's going to mean that LGB are only one round behind Virtus Pro and one round behind evening up everything with all still to play for. Crims is going to find that player though. Neo shuts him down, showing his resilience. Great, great work from the Polish man. 15-12 it is. There's some Virtus Pro fans in the chat. They're going to be happy. And this should be game. Look at LGB's buy. They've got four Deagles and a CZ75. They're just going with what they can. And Virtus Pro, as I've said before, and I will say it again, showing why they are the Kadovici champions. 
Five rounds down. Then they lose the second pistol round of the game. They lost both pistol rounds, as I've said. But then suddenly in that 17th round eco, I don't quite know how they did it, but they just decided to come and play again. They were like, okay, we're in danger of losing this game. Let's show why we're the best. And that's exactly what they have done. Snacks and Pasha opening up this potentially last round here. Pasha with another one as well. It's all left up to Olof Meister and Twist. I think they pretty much know it could be game. They have been able to take down Pasha and Snacks is on 2 HP. But it's Olof Meister in a 1 on 4. And he does get taken down. Snacks with the knife to finish everything off. Completely humiliating. Humiliating, sorry, Olaf Meister. And uh, what happened to LGB there, guys? You know, they looked like they were going to be good. It should have been. It was 11-5 after the 16th round. They should have had two more rounds after that to put themselves on a 13-5. And they would have been three rounds away from winning the game with... Uh, Virtus Pro with a hell of a long way to try and come back into it. But it didn't work. It wasn't the case. It wasn't the story. The plan didn't go according to script for the Swedes. And Virtus Pro finishing out the game 16-12. So, I'm just going to be going for a very quick commercial break, guys. Just while I work out what's next, what time the next match is, um, what's happening, um, and what I'm doing. And then I will ask you some questions to see who you want me to cover. And I'll be right back in a second. So don't go anywhere, guys. I'll be right back. I'll play some...